Hello and welcome to The Last Andy, a board game podcast coming to you from three exciting countries across Europe. I'm joined here today by Audrey. Hi everyone! By Alessio. Hello, hello everyone! And I will be your host, Alexis. Today, Audrey will talk to us about Cart Adventure and Alessio will discuss the game spots. But first, uh, we'll start by seeing how everyone is doing in the Stanley Catch-Up. So how have you been doing, Audrey? Uh, it's, it's, been, it's been a while, I think, since my last uh, presence for an episode. So... Yeah, it has. Yeah, I, I, I don't have bad memory that much. Um, so yeah, on the overall, I've been doing fine. Um, quite busy at work, to be honest. Um, and our recording schedule didn't allow me too much to, to be there. But uh, a few holidays here and there uh, let me participate, which is great. Uh, other than that, uh, it's been mostly uh, quite a bit of role-playing game for me uh, lately. Much more than a uh, board game, even though I've had my fair share of board games. Uh, in role-playing games, I've tr uh, been uh, able to attend a one-shot of Aegon um, a few weeks ago, which I really enjoyed. Uh, it was very fun, so for those that don't know Aegon, uh, it's... Uh, not too common, apparently. Uh, not very well-known um, role-playing game about uh, basically playing heroes of um, ancient Greek mythology. Uh, so you are going to be uh, busy attending uh, islands uh, and seeing monsters. And basically the idea is that... Um, the way it is set up, you are like traveling on your ship, like like the Argonauts. Um, it made me think a lot of Aeon Trespass Odyssey, I have to admit. Um, so yeah, you, you are traveling on your ship and every uh, game session is actually yeah set up like a one-shot where you arrive to a city, uh, you see how things are uh, going there, you investigate, and then you have, at a certain point, a final confrontation, which can be social, which can be mystical, which can be close to anything. Um, but yeah, you are going to follow this every time, uh, which makes it very convenient for any one-shot uh, type of game or even make it like a semi something um, campaign where people can come and go and you have all your crew and the people that uh, do this scenario vary from one session to another which makes it a bit lively as a crew so I, I yeah I, I think I think I, I saw that it has a gorgeous rulebook. It's a small one, but um, very nice, yeah. And, and it's quite a cheap one, to be honest. Um, I think it's like 12 or 15 dollars for the PDF and 25 something for the for the rulebook. I don't remember the name of the creator. Uh, the DM mentioned it, but I, I forgot. Uh, but he the DM said that this um, creator is used to making things very different uh, from what you would see with different kinds of systems and stuff, and it's a very narrative one. Um, so I'm really, really happy that I got to do this uh, this session, and I really look forward to the next time the, the DM announces another game, probably in a two or three months, because he is not doing that all the time due to the repetitiveness uh, of the actions and things you do, etc., etc. So yeah, really nice, and on the board game side, with my husband, we've been going to the board game cafe around here um, regularly, let's say. Um, and we discovered Carter Ventura there, which is why I'm going to talk about it now, since we have played two or three different uh, boxes now. And um, I think that's everything for now, which is already a nice... Uh, <laughs> A nice catch-up! What have you been up to, Alessio? Yeah. Oh, uh, well, uh, I, I am supposed to know how to answer this. So, <laughs> uh, le le let me get my notes. <laughs> no, actually, uh, I think I'll use this uh, as a bit of outlet for news because there's a lot happening in the board game communities. So, uh, uh, 
let's start with uh, saying that I received the Black Knight ex expansion, so uh, Joy to the World, it's actually a huge amount of content and I'm kind of uh, more than happy with it. It looks very good. I am still uh, uh, theory crafting about it. I, I haven't yet played it, so I really don't know. But the, the modular board is uh, is very smart. I think Adam is trying to out outdo himself every time uh, these times. He, he he feels probably like he has he has something to demonstrate, and it's completely fine to me. So <laughs> that's it about this. But the, the, the real piece of news from the last few days is that uh, finally the, the unmatched set I was waiting for has been finally announced. So uh, uh, very, very soon unmatched players from across the globe will be able to play with William Shakespeare, Ooh. which is a, a thing I am trying to do since forever because I want to put it against the T-Rex basically <laughs> so <laughs> that's it that's my match and the, the new box set set has been announced by restoration games uh, it will probably since it's from public domain it, it will probably be translated everywhere so everyone will get there will get it in their language not like the marvel ones and it uh, it is called slings and arrows from that hamlet uh, quote like uh, okay I, I, I won't embark on this. Like uh, whether this is nobler in the mind to suffer the the slings and arrows of a, of a tragic fate or something like that. So uh, I'm not an in English speaker. So hopefully, <laughs> but but we will go, we'll get on this later because uh, uh, there is a lot of things that uh, uh, I'll probably say about spots, we, which is uh, uh, well we will see we'll see later, but. <laughs> Uh, the important thing is that the set is due this year and it will have uh, uh, the aforementioned uh, William Shakespeare, then you can play also as Hamlet or the Wayward Sisters or as uh, someone else from Shakespeare creation. Let me see the news. Um, uh, uh, then you the wayward sisters hamlet and some female child okay titania okay. Ah, titania <laughs> yeah. from the from the midnight uh, summer dream yeah uh, midsummer dreams night or something like that i, I still don't know the the, the 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 full english titles because i studied them in italian so <laughs> okay anyway uh, since I'm trying to hang myself with my tongue, I'll just go ahead. And uh, a friend of mine reci recently received the Trick Shot, which is a beautiful hockey game from uh, from a Kickstarter project from a while ago. And uh, I'm basically uh, munching my elbows or something. I'm completely envious because that game is great. I don't know if I can review it because uh, I, I need to have it for a long time, but Trick Shot is beautiful, so uh, it's from Wolf de Signa, uh, the, the, the same designers uh, of Guards of Atlantis 2, and um, they do consistently good games, so they should be on the radar a bit more, but Trick Shot is beautiful, it's amazing, it's fun, and it has many levels to play it and it's simpler it's uh, i really have a lot of compliments for that game so i hope to have a copy for long enough to talk about it but uh, basically i think that with the success it has it will probably be available very soon in some way maybe another maybe another kickstarter or game found campaign so uh, this is my news item for watch about watch look be on the lookout for it because when it comes it's a solid a re a recommendation it's very fun and speaking of kickstarters or crowdfunding projects it recently very recently funded Ederston from virginia gigli uh, which is a beautiful card game a bit inspired by res arcana a bit different very 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 smart game with just seven cards for uh, people practical with card games because it's not 
exceedingly simple, but it's a lot of, a lot of fun. It just funded, so it is probably still available. It, it, it goes for under $30, so probably it's something worth look out, looking out if you are uh, someone loving card games. Uh, if you uh, were born in the hobby with Magic the Gathering, you will probably like this. So, and that basically, sounds like the, a great game for yeah, China. yeah. I had a lot of news, I took a lot of notes, I wanted to talk about this, so the catch-up is probably the best place to to talk about this. Uh, about me, I just uh, finished Unicorn Overlord, so it took me a bit less than two weeks to finish, I think. I completely pl pl platinumated it or something like that, <laughs> I, I did all, all the stuff worth an achievement. So, well, uh, it, it is a very good game, it is a very precious gem, it is immense, but uh, you have ways to finish it very fast. So probably it's leaning a bit on the easy side. I unlocked a new difficulty level, but I don't think I'll go through it again. So very, very recommended, possibly not for $70, but <laughs> it's a beautiful video game anyway. Uh, small work of art so uh, that's it and that's all about me for these days uh, so what about you Alexis on my end uh, not too many board games I've uh, not advanced as much as I wanted in uh, Seven Citadel so I won't be able to talk about it right now but I believe that uh, the next episode I'll be on we should have a talk about it with everyone that, that received the game and played it uh, so I so I do believe that Fen is going to put it aside for a little bit more. Um, I'm also going to play uh, some um, role-playing games soon. Uh, we are going to start a small little thing with a couple of friends of mine um, regarding uh, Call of Cthulhu. So it's going to, go to be great playing with my girlfriends and a friend of ours. Uh, and I don't I like believe... Tulu, I'm too afraid. <laughs> and I believe that on uh, Sunday, is it? We're going to do a big escape room with Audrey and her boyfriend. So Sat lots of Saturday stuff. evening, but yeah, uh, oh, that's evening, not well. very important. Yeah. Uh, ex uh, expect, I'm... by the way, being asked about if you like the vampire role-playing game. <laughs> Uh, I'm actually going to take the train to go see Audrey in uh, just a little bit uh, as soon as the recording is over, basically. A uh, bit, bit after that, but we'll see. Um, so that is going to be really fun. I've also received a Black Knight expansion, but not played it yet. I'm looking forward to that, uh, but that will probably have to wait until we finish our uh, Gamblers campaign because we are getting closer to the end with every time I go there. All right, but before we can talk about other topics, I wanted to do a small public service announcement regarding the company Golden Bells that is owned by, I believe his name is Mark Goldner. Um, I didn't note that down. Yes, it is Mark Goldner. Um, by now- The ones from Unbroken, right? Yeah, exactly. By now they are somewhat infamous, but it seems that some creators are still falling for them. So long story short, if you ever see a game that is fulfilled by uh, Golden Bells, I would strongly advise against buying or pledging for that game or getting anywhere near that game. Uh, Golden Bells have an history of contacting small developers. Uh, new to board games, uh, offering them a juicy contract to handle all of the complicated fulfillment process, encouraging them to add some merch and goodies. But those contracts are often wolves wearing sheepskins. Uh, they often involve handling complete control over their IP to Golden Bells and ha uh, handling complete controls over any kind of merchandising and all, that, all of that. They are also terrible at uh, the actual fulfillment part, so that is not great. Uh, recently, for example, the author of the comics Oh No uh, has been locked in legal trouble uh, regarding that. The Golden Braille approached Alex Norris, the comics artist, asking them to illustrate a board game inspired by the comics, but instead uh, the contract he signed can be interpreted as handing them the Oh No IP 
altogether. And Golden Belts have started selling their own merchandise based on the comics and then sued the author when Alex tried to publish a book of his own. Uh, they are also claiming ownership of the phrase oh no, uh, which is <laughs> quite funny. Oh no! Preposterous! Pre yeah. No, no, no! <laughs> <laughs> Similarly, Golden Bells took over the publishing of the game Unbroken a few years back, a great solo game that fan reviewed in uh, episode 10, if I remember correctly. Uh, I do remember correctly, I checked <laughs> the recording. Uh, yeah, Golden humble, Bells... be humble. <laughs> <laughs> Golden Bells pulled a similar scam there, joining the campaigns on the last day of the Kickstarter and then proceeding to delay everything steal the publishing rights from the author of the game and basically push the author of the game to not touch both games uh, for a while because they just made the experience horrible. Uh, as an aside, Golden Bells have their lawyers uh, leaving the company every few months. They keep changing their lawyers in uh, every court filing that you can look with them. They have a different lawyer attached because lawyers don't like working for scammers. Uh, in so, any case, I would recommend yeah. against... Uh, I would recommend so you, that if you see that name, you just steer clear, because they are... You, you, are, right. you are both... Yeah, Alexis, you are basically telling us that we will get... We will probably be sued about this. Yes. Margot yeah. is very uh, <laughs> litigious, but I don't think that we are anywhere near his radio. Yeah, but uh, any, uh, yeah, yeah. The, the important thing is that that we are just reporting facts or allegedly what people think. It's actually uh, the important part is that uh, the authors uh, are actually awarded what they earned with their products and that the, the bakers get uh, what they paid for. So that's basically it. It didn't happen with Unbroken, and I'm really sad about, sad about that. I, I actually, uh, the same game fan reviewed in episode 10, I, I got in PDF format because I was sure that that was the only format I would get after the campaign. So I, I totally agree with this. And uh, yeah, at least uh, buyers beware or watch out for something, for anything that comes for from Golden Belt Studio, you are probably safe to buy merchandise because they gain direct money with that. But for the rest, uh, well, be careful. Yeah. Uh, that was the, the small service, uh, public service announcement that I wanted to make. Now back to our regular schedule. Uh, so today we'll be discussing, I guess it's Audrey that's going to start with uh, Card Ventura. Yes! So, Carta Ventura, as I mentioned, a game that my husband and I discovered uh, when going into the board game cafe, uh, where they have, I think, four or five uh, different boxes of Carta Ventura. Um, so, Carta Ventura is, a, in my opinion, a very special kind of game. Uh, it, I, I'm not going to say it has its own uh, niche, but it's very, very unique. Um, so it stands in a tiny, each game stands in a tiny box, which is like 10 by 10 by 3 centimeters, something like that. So it's very tiny and it just consists of a deck of cards. It's a narrative cooperative board game. I will get to the cooperative part uh, in, in a little bit. Every game of Carta Ventura is its own story, so some will have you playing Viking and invoking the favors of the Viking gods uh, to help you vanquish your foes. Uh, some will have you be a um, noble girl uh, in uh, old Versailles and um, trying to do your best with the cards that life dealt you, including a, a vagina, which uh, doesn't make it very easy in that time. And some others will have you be a son of a merchant in uh, 1331, etc, uh, etc. Et it's, it's all very diverse. And the way it plays is extremely simple. So most of the cards of the deck of cards, so always 70 cards, are double-sided. There is something written on one side, something written on the other side. First off, you are going to have to uh, flip, uh, well, flip draw a few of these cards and put them uh, initial side up 
and they are going to tell you a story, give you the initial situation, explain you the choices that you may have to do, explain to you uh, we, what choices you can do and which could be the consequences based on what you, you can imagine easily. And you're going to make your own choice based on that. So choice can be, oh, I'm going to take the choice of the card number four, which is basically going to the stables, for instance, and see the, the master um, there who takes care of the horses and talk with him. Or I'm going to take uh, the choice of card seven and I'm going to go to the sparring rounds and I'm going to have a few rounds of uh, sword fighting with the people to train, etc, etc. So you take the choices and generally there is the, the, the results are very simple. Either you have a certain card with you because there are some item cards. So either you have the item cards that make you succeed and then you, for instance, flip the card or you don't have the item card that makes you succeed and then you just take the next card in the deck, for instance, and you will follow that. So as simple as it may seem, uh, it's, it's, it's in fact so sometimes complex for instance on the P paris versailles one we, we thought it um quite it was quite simple to be honest um but for the viking ones for instance uh, you will have some different choices that will make you um invoke the favors of odin but you need the favor of loki to achieve this other action and so you are going to learn which choices get you gets you where and you will get an ending at some point because you have reached uh, one of the end of the story. Because every box has five, I think, five endings, six endings maybe, um, probably more like five. Um, and so with the five endings, you definitely have or can replay it. So that means, for instance, the first time you play the Versailles story, you will go away with your lover. And the second time you will stay here and help your father or something very different and you will get to a different ending. You have a card, uh, I think it's a card 70, which is made to write uh, every endings that you get to make sure that, yeah, you track what you are doing. I think that is very smart to have a final ending card which sums up what you have done. It's kind of like when you play board games and do achievements somehow. And I really like this part because you really feel like, yeah, you are progressing, you are seeing seeing different things and the games won't look the same, uh, if it makes sense. So I really, really, really enjoy that, uh, that part. And um, as you do your different stories, you will get sometimes some items, as I said, or some modifications of the story that you can keep for your next play playtime. So for instance, if we look at the girl uh, in Paris, for the second time, she might be trained in swords better than the first time and so she will win the fights uh, at the sparring round, for instance, easily. And etc, etc. So you have really this... Um, and it stands in 70 square cards. I think that's something that is really amazing, the fact that it's so self-contained and that it it works so well and it flows honestly very, very, very nicely. And it looks very simple and I have forgotten the best part. The best part is that each box is 12 euros. Yeah, <laughs> that is quite an attractive point, uh, price point. Yeah, yeah. yeah honestly, uh... the main issue, in my opinion, is what it says. It's for one to six players, ages ten plus. I do agree with that part, and it takes sixty minutes to play a game, roughly. It, it can be less, it can be more, depending on the choices that you make. If the choices make you, let's say, finish this story earlier, wait, so be it. I disagree on the one to six players part. Because, I mean, it's reading cards. So, one, people, one person has the card in their hand and reads to the other ones, and then you make choices. You, make, you can make choices collectively or semi-collectively. I mean, even if something is written in the rules, you, I mean, come on, you, you, can, you can do however you feel like. 
but at some point you don't need to be six to decide whether the girl in Versailles is going to stay with her father or go with her lover. You you really really don't need that much, and yeah, g- games like that I have often feel that even being more than two people, it's it feels a bit crowded around the table. Yeah, I I think that two people maybe maybe three is good because you can you can discuss you can say oh be, because I think this is a good choice yeah but we. Blah, blah, blah. You can negotiate a bit, but more than free. Nah. Uh, I, I I can actually comment about this. Ah. So uh, no, I, I I absolutely agree. Uh, I mean, my, my experience with Cartaventura is exclusively with the Cartaventura caravans, which it's the one we bought. Have... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I don't have it anymore because basically uh, the, the story is that the, 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 my local uh, game store has... Uh, uh, I live in Terni, which is a city near Rome, the, the uh, closest city, a close city near my hometown is uh, Perugia, Perugia is a city with the biggest board game store in, I- in Italy, so uh, I usually go there, but I got stuff shipped to me too, and uh, I got a deal with shipping for 25 euros, mm. so... That price point is not attractive at this point. No, I, I got actually, uh, I'm sorry I explained that badly, uh, I got free shipping if I purchase for 25 euros. Oh. Oh. I, I I just b- bought something. Uh, I don't remember the game I originally bought, but I needed four euros to get there. There was a nine uh, nine euros ninety nine offer for Cataventura Caravan, so I bought that. <laughs> and uh, I completely agree with your assessment, and I can tell you that uh, it's actually. Uh, these games are usually are usually compared to choose your own adventure yes. books, and when you have when there's a lot to read, you don't want a lot of people around the table because they get distracted. They want to do something. They want to participate in some way, which is actually not really well designed in these kind of games. So. Uh, I recommend to play Carta Aventura with two people because the multiple endings and the various choices and the evolving games are actually uh, they make you poignant decisions to discuss. It's fun to discuss the game. It's actually way better than solo playing. Yes. Uh, so two people is actually my best player count. Three people is still fun. So okay, not for more than three. Uh, but two people is really the sweet spot of this game, for uh, in my opinion. So that's it. Oh, uh, I'm happy. I'm happy that we that, that we that we agree. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that's because that's sometimes a, a I say something and then Fen or Alexis or Kara I will say something that I disagree with, and then I'm I feel I feel like oh I didn't think about that, and yeah. <laughs> No, okay, okay. Let's meta, me, let's meta podcast this. <laughs> I love when Kara te, when you say uh, when when someone says, uh, "Oh, I like this game. This is very fun." And Kara, okay, this was boring. <laughs> I, I actually wait for those reviews. So, Kara, please in next episode. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway. Uh, no, it, it, basically, Carta Aventura is a very fun series of games, and it's something you can have and then dispose of because it's actually everything on cards. So, y- y- yeah, you basically don't ruin it. You you play it, you discover all the secrets you want, and it's beautiful. And you pass it on. One thing, yeah, you pass it on, and uh, the game is actually uh, the, at least Caravans. I don't know the others. Uh, they came with booklets describing uh, the, the the historical context in uh, in a lot of detail. Actually, I was impressed. <laughs> yeah, I, I really think honestly it's a very like uh, smart game. Not as in you have to be smart, but like the way it's laid out, the way the, the components are, are. I mean the components, the cards are, and the way it looks like so simple at the ta- at the time and then complex as well when you have to. Oh, I remember this choice, and yeah, I, I think it's very smart. 
yeah, I, I had a fun time with my caravans. So it's okay. Uh, probably the, the only real issue with these kind of games is that when you replayed it enough, it's uh, done. Yeah. You probably have no interest in pursuing them anymore, but for that 10 euros game, uh, I, I think it's okay to replay it five or six times and be done with it. Yeah, so I guess that's all for Cat Ventura, a very smart uh, choose your own adventure card game. Yay! No, I, I want the transition to spots now, so I'll be waiting until it's done. <laughs> all right, go on! <laughs> <laughs> Well, Card Venture is a game that is all about cards, but today uh, Alessio is going to talk about another game about cards and dices. Question yeah. <laughs> okay, this is a transition. This is a transition, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Not my best one. No, no, the, the, these ones are the best. I think we, we need to do a transition <laughs> contest uh, one day or another. So, <laughs> yeah, spots! Uh, Spots is basically and mostly and first of all it's a game about doggos. Yeah. It's Dalme yeah, it's Dalmatians. I think there's a cat in the illustrations, but I have to get it back again. But it's Dalmatians because oh. they are this black they, they are these black and white uh, dogs uh, with black with uh, with black spots uh, which are represented by dice. So you have these cars which have the the illustration of a doggo with uh, small spots that you have to fill with dice. Uh, when you fill the spot with dice, and oh, okay, let's let me do a forward because I, I went uh, immediately and directly on uh, on the game. And actually, disclaimer: I'm absolutely not a native English speaker, so uh, I hope there's nothing that could be misinterpreted when I say things like you score a dog, like uh, it's nothing sexual, hopefully. So, <laughs> uh, because in, the, in this game you score dogs, or, uh, well, let me start again. <laughs> so, uh, Spots is a game from uh, John Perry, which who is the author of Ireland and Sea. That is an inspiration for basically Marvel Snap, because Air Land and Sea is Marvel Snap with war and with animals, if you got the far version. And from the authors of Wavelength. So, uh, I basically, my first contact with Spot was the news on BGG. I, I tended to ignore it because, well, it's a game about placing spots on Dalmatians. Okay, it could be a fun premise, I'm okay, but how complex would it be? I don't know. Uh, so I, te I tend to ignore it, then I got it gifted uh, kind of last year. And you had no choice I... anymore. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 I, I, I still kept ignoring it ah. for a long while, until my son got it uh, and said, I'm bored, let's play spots. So it's okay, because it's also an exercise in speaking English, there's no Italian version of it, at least for now. And we tried it, and it was a blast. Because uh, basically what is the goal of this game? You get cards for these dogs and you have a ton of dice. You have small bonds, which are treats, which are rerolls for you. And then you have six tiles in the middle, two of which are always there, while the other four are randomized at the start of the game. These tiles are all the actions you can do. When you take an action, you choose the tile, you flip the tile because it's not available anymore, and you execute that action. Uh, when you execute the action, the action is not available, and uh, you go on until only one action remains. At that point, you place a reroll for free on whoever takes that action, and then you flip back all the other actions, and you start again. What are the actions? You are basically trying to fill the spot, the spots in the dogs, so that when a dog is full, as all the spots full, it can be scored. When you get to six dogs scored, you win, but you do it by rolling dice. So you probably need three pips to fill a dog, but you roll a four. So what you do with that four? Well, you are a dog, you bury it in your yard. 
so when you go barring the die you place it with face up with the value uh, very visible on your yard when your yard is full with s more than seven pips you basically uh, oh, l let me say the, 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 the term in english because it's absolutely technical so you bust yeah <laughs> you uh, basically bust your your game and you remove all die because you exceeded uh, your allowance and uh, all the dogs start again from scratch except the ones you already scored so scratch. Ha, what ha. do you... yeah that, that's basically it you 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 take an action there are actions uh, Two actions are always there and are there to make the game balanced. The other four actions are very weird, like roll one die for each dog, which are still, which still has spots free on itself, and then you can repeat this action as many times as you want. So you basically are invited to bust. It's a very push your luck, or there are very specific uh, actions like. Uh, uh, roll seven dice but you keep exactly eight points of those that you must allocate and you can discard the rest safely uh, there are actions which give you treat there is a lot of strategy involved in picking the actions because uh, sometimes you do what is best for you so you are just trying to score dogs as fast as possible and sometimes since you are basically alternating with players and in two players this game is cutthroat uh, you just pick actions to prevent others to get detection so it's it's uh, it's a very fun combination of action selection which is a, a fun mechanic because basically it's all trying to get in the way of the others while doing the best for you with absolute push your luck because the dice I ate everyone at the table so it's beautiful you are keep rolling oh uh, one thing i didn't say is that re-rolls are treats you have ways to get treats of course but when you spend a treat you cannot just re-roll one die you have to re-roll all the dice you rolled so uh, it's a mess it's beautiful it's gloriously messy and complicated and actually very easy to play you you just get you, you just get to complicate your table state as much as you want by doing risky stuff by taking risk at the, at the wrong moment which is the fun part and you go on uh, another thing that which is very diabolical from the authors is that uh, to score dogs you usually have to waste an action so meaning that your turn is exclusively removing all uh, the dice from your completed dogs so you if you bust it uh, nothing happens and then you flip the dogs to the completed side so that they are safe forever but this wastes an action so in a game with a an action selection so tight it could cost you the game because you basically end up always getting the, the action you want blocked by the game tempo possibly so if you want you can choose to score uh, it's called the, the risky way so if at any moment at the end of your turn all your dogs are completed you can score all of them for free without spending an action so what happens most of the time is that there is someone with one or two dogs scored and someone else with uh, with a board with a with a mat full of dogs with a lot of die on them who is trying to, to to score them at once and everyone else at the table is trying to make them bust by taking all the safe action from them and <laughs> ruining the game for themselves so this game is, uh, uh, this game is a complete mess and it's it can be strategic uh, as much as you want and as much the table wants so it's basically a blast uh, i loved it and uh, well the, the first thing i have to say is that this is a perfect family game and it's actually 
very very fun with casual players like uh, i uh, my, my friend who got trick shot because it's a thing from a couple of weeks ago uh, my friend uh, who got trick shot trick shot uh, brought uh, trick shot to me to play and uh, since we were actually waiting i played with another friend who intervened and it became fiercely competitive I don't know, but, but seeing someone rolling exactly perfectly what they need and you keeping questing the rolls to try to get that six or that one or that exactly two makes everyone rage, but in a fun way. So all I, I, all I can say is that this game is fun and even if dice ate everyone, not just you, you cannot say angry at doggos. It's beautiful. <laughs> I looked at the uh, box art and it, it looks very like yeah, kid friendly. I would say. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and they're very cute. And anyway, everyone loves loves doggos. Uh, even the cat people loves doggos uh, at at a time. <laughs> and yeah, the, it it looks very, very. I mean, it looks simple. Uh, but you are saying it's not that simple. So I, that's probably a. A game that you take because you think, oh, the art is cute, and then you end up like, ah. Yeah, that's the second. St related to this, that's the second story about spots, because, uh, well, I, I since I started playing it with my family, I thought of it as a family game, and that happened until I actually learned that it was on board game arena. So, since I have a board game arena premium account, I decided to give it a shot. I don't know, it was fun with family. And the game on board game arena is fiercely competitive. I, I don't think I don't think there are magic the gathering players that dedicated to victory, that cynical <laughs> in trying to pursue victory, as I saw in spots in board game arena. So uh Actually, this game has a competitive dimension, which is taken so, so, so seriously. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, if you go there, uh, give me a ring, uh, make me a push notification, do something, because I am always down to play. If you are, I, I don't think with, I'll uh, go there. Yeah. I don't think I'll uh, yeah. nah. <laughs> So that, that, that's it, basically. And uh, another thing, very, 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 very fun, is that actually the, the, the manual is pretty big. Let, let me see. I think the manual, it's a small uh, box, but the manual is 20 pages. Oof. But these 20 pages are basically made with images. I think the, the, the main, the first six pages are just pictures. And, uh, pictures of like ga game all. situations. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, the game is explained basically visually and it works. There are a lot of mods that you can play, alternative scenarios like se a specific selection of tiles give you, gives you a specific type of game. So you, you could end up with a reflexive game, with a game which, is, uh, which needs you to exactly perform some actions in a specific order or reroll a lot to get exactly that uh, that pip you need because you get one dog at a time and something like that there are scenarios like the walk in the park where are uh, a lot of dogs you, you can get a lot of dogs because everything gives you dogs so you you usually try to get go wide and roll a lot of dice uh, there are scenarios which are prepared for everything and there is like um, a messy mod. Let, 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 let me get the name because I, I never played this, but it looks oh, off leash. Yes, of course. That's the off leash variant. When whenever you flip a tile and you have to flip them back, instead of flipping them back, you pick another random tile. Is there a cooperative so, version where, where all the players play against Cruella de Ville? <laughs> <laughs> No, the, the, you need way more dimensions. I think the the maximum number of players is four, but I will actually... Uh, because if there is I not, play... that's a missed opportunity. Yeah, <laughs> that, that will probably be, I think, six dimensions for everyone. You have to go to 101, so you, you, st you still have a lot. You need to buy a lot of boxes. Yeah. But anyway... 
this is POTS, it's very fun, it's very recommended, of course it's not uh, the, the, the definitive game of 2024, but it's actually from 2022, probably, yeah. Uh, I, have it, I had it around for a lot, but it's fun, it's, it was a discovery in my collection, so I am actually pretty happy about it. Recommended, that's it. All right, well, that game sounds like a really fun time, uh, especially with a, with a small group of people. Yeah, it is. Small cat fraud group of people. <laughs> I, I mean, we, we recommend it Tassi Massi. So uh, <laughs> you, you, you make bouquet. So <laughs> it's a beautiful drafting, yeah. <laughs> so we can recommend spots. All right, any finishing thoughts on uh, spots? Not for me. Well, I guess that's all the time that we have for this episode, and I have a train to catch. So you can catch us over at patreon.com slash the last ND. And we'll be until next time, the last ND. It's going to be a goodbye from Audrey. Bye bye. A goodbye from Alessio. Bye bye. And a goodbye from me. And remember that the second E in Standy stands for um, adventure. Igreju. Adventure. <laughs> Adventure, yes. Yeah, of course. Egregious, yeah. Egregious works too. Yeah. The Egregious Adventure. Bye.